Hello, my name is Martina and I'm a tutor with the ETV Adult Education. Um, today I'm going to talk about wiring. Um, why do we wire flares? We wire flares for support, for flexibility, for anchorage. They're the main reasons we wire flares. And usually we wire flares in wedding work would be the common, most common reason to wire flares. And if we're making arrangements in oasis or putting flares and pine cones and that type of thing onto reeds. So there's different types of wire. Stub wire. Um, stub wire is just a wire that's cut into lengths and comes in a bundle. And um, there's different gauges of wire. The gauge of the wire is the strength and flexibility of the wire. The highest gauge is roughly 1.25 millimeters and the finest gauge is 0.20 millimeters. This one here is fairly high gauge, it's about 0.90 millimetres and that would be used for big headed heavy flowers or flowers with a woody stem or for wiring up foliage with a woody stem. So that's a fairly strong one. This one is more a medium, it's also a stub wire, that would be roughly about a 0.56 millimetres, it's still fairly strong. And then we have a very very fine stub wire which is a silver wire that would be used for very delicate work, mostly in wedding work, freesias, uh, lily of the valley, that type of flare. Um, and that would be kind of a 0 0.32 to a 0 0.20 millimetre. And it's very fine. And then wire also comes in a reel. It's the same thing really, except it's just wire on a reel. So this one is a plain black wire. And it's a, it's a great wire. It's a about a 0.38 um, gauge so it's quite flexible but it's strong and it's, it, it's used for many things it's a, a very good gauge because it's not too strong it's not too light so it works many ways and the thing to remember it with wire is try and use the lightest gauge you can get away with because then it makes the work more delicate and less bulky this is silver wire on a reel so um, again, that's used for wedding work mo mostly because it's expensive and um, it can be incorporated into part of a design. That's gold wire on a reel, so again, that's expensive and that would be for decoration and for delicate work as well. Right, I'm just going to make a, a simple buttonhole just to give the idea of how you can use the wire. Now, that's an ivy leaf, it's fairly flexible. And it needs a bit of support because I wanted to put the backing on a buttonhole. Um, here's one I made earlier, so I wanted to look similar to that. Um, I've used ivy, a little bit of heather, and a, one ag aguilesia flower head. Okay, so for ivy leaf, we'll use the silver wire because it's for a buttonhole, so we want it to be nice and delicate and not too bulky. So what we're going to do is make a stitch. So you go in at the back of the leaf with your piece of silver wire, and at the back, you just come across a small stitch and out the other side. Okay, so small stitch there at the base of the leaf, and that's what it looks like at the back. The wire is just going through. So then you bend those bend that wire down so you have like two little legs and you wrap them around the stem of the ivy leaf. I apologise now my bandaged thumb is still getting in the way. So you wrap the wires around the stem so that gives it a bit more flexibility and strength. Okay now there's a I'll use two ag aguilegias because they are they're small, so I'm going to wire the two of them and put them together. So the silver wire would be perfect for this because it's quite a delicate flare. It's got a, a big head, but it's very delicate stem. So when you use the wire, it'll just give it a bit of strength, less likely to break. So you go in at the back of the flare, put the wire in about a centimetre, and then you wrap the silver wire down the stem. We'll do the same with this one.
at the back and then just wrap the flare, wrap the wire down the stem. And just for a little decoration, we're going to use a little bit of heather. Now, where is my pins? So that's a strongish bit that doesn't really need any wiring. But these little bits, I want to put them together so I'm cleaning off the bottom part of the stems. So they're taking off the extra foliage on them. So I want to make a little bunch out of them. So I'm just going to use the silver wire again. So this time I make like a loop, like a hairpin shape. Put that to the back of the stems, squeeze it in, and then wrap it. So you have a little, well, that fell out, that wasn't supposed to happen, so we'll just put it back in again. And squeeze the wire around it, so it doesn't fall out again. Okay, so there we go. So I put these together, and to put them together, I'm going to use stem tape. Um, so stem tape is used when you want to bind or cover up your wire work. So it comes in a few different colours. That's that's a moss green, that's a sage green, I think it's called. It also comes in brown and white, possibly black, but they'd be the most common ones that you use. So it's the side that's stuck to the roll is sticky and it's also stretchy. So the idea is that you stretch it as you wrap it around the stem because it'll hold better and it looks neater as well. So we'll put our ivy at the back. Okay, we'll use our small, smaller flare up high. This one down a little bit lower. And then we'll add in our heather that little bit and the bit that we didn't need to wire. So we'll put it all in together. And then we'll use our stem tape to bind it. So you place the stickier side down. Now it's not very sticky, just slightly sticky. And you pull, and as you pull, you twist it around the stems and you stretch it as well. Now, we don't have to go down the full way, so we can cut it there. And there we have a little buttonhole. Okay. So, that's all I'm going to talk about wiring today. Um, I will show you next how to make some bows. Um, This is what's called pot ribbon. It comes in lots and lots of different colours. It's plastic and it's cheap and it's used widely. Now, I suppose the advantage of it is that it's cheap and it's not going to cost you a lot. The disadvantage is that it's plastic, so it's not biodegradable. And I suppose in this day and age, we all have to be conscious of what is biodegradable and what isn't. But I'll show you how to make a couple of simple bows with this and then move on to other types of ribbon. So I'm going to pull out a length. The tear is very easy. So if you just go into the middle of it, bring your nail, pull off a strip. So you have a thick piece and a thin piece. The thin piece is going to be used to tie the bow together. So it's just a length of ribbon. Now, what we're going to do, you're basically making a figure of eight shape over and over, okay? So it's just going like that. Okay, so if you hold the little piece hang down, because that's going to be the part of the finish. Push the bow in, you're catching it there in the middle, then you're going back up the other way. So you're catching it then again, so it's, it's like that. Then you're going again, and you're going slightly higher okay so it's coming out a tiny bit more than the other one so back up 
the back in. Okay, now that's roughly the shape. I'm going to do it again because I want this to be more even. Okay. So we're holding it there. So each time we're catching it in the middle, okay. We're going up another bit. One more time. So that's that's a more even because you've you've got the two pieces, two pieces hanging down. So basically what you've done, you've done three loops up and down like that and catching it in the middle. So it's like three eighths squashed together. So when you have that, you squash it then in and then you tie it with the piece that you pulled off. So you tie it very tight. You don't want it coming loose. There you have your bow. Now you can pull it out then down the hanging bits and just pull that forward. And that's your poly ribbon bow. And you use these these bits then to tie it on wherever it's going. I'll show you now how to make another type of ribbon using the poly ribbon. So this time you're going to make a circle okay. So again you have a little bit hanging over and you're going to go around about five times. Now how big the circle bit is that's how big your bow will be. I don't want a huge bow. So that's three times. Four. Five. And so that's where you started. Okay, so that's bits there. So you're going to finish just the far side of that. So you have a crossover of those two bits. Okay, so that's your finished bit. And that was your start bit. So your start bit's in the inside and your finished bit is on the outside. So that's where you want to cut. So you put it together like that. And now you're going to make a cut either side, but you're not going to go completely through. So you're cutting. So if you see that, there's a cut either side, but it's not completely through. There's a bit in the middle. So I'm going to pull off a bit of time. So you're going to tie that piece in between, pull it in between the, the slits that you made. This is quite awkward with the bandaged thumb, but anyway, so you keep going. So you put it in. The tied bit is in between those slits each side and you pull it quite tight. You tighten a knot. Okay, so now you want to puff out the bow. So you work from the inside, okay? So you push the first bit one way, and the second the other way. So you've gone left and right each time. Pull out the next piece. Okay. Then you go to the other side and you do the same. So you go right, left, right, left. Okay. And then we have what you call a pom pom bow. Now, I did five circles with the ribbon. If you want a fuller bow, bigger bow, you could do more circles. You can go a bigger circle. So that's your pumpkin bowl. 
now we have some other ribbon here. Yeah. Now with these bows, you can make the very same type of bow um, as this one. Yeah, the pom pom ribbon doesn't work so well because it's this is too floppy, it doesn't really hang very well. But we'll make one of those with the satin ribbon. So this is uh, satin material. And this, these kind of bows you'd use for fancier work. So I'm going to make the bow with this and I'm going to tie it with that. So I'll pull out my tie first. Tie that like this. So it's the same thing, you're going, you're doing your loops over and back like that. Again, this would be more expensive than the tie ribbon, but it's, it looks nicer and it gives a more expensive look and finish. Okay, so here's the, a little bit long. So we have the loops, cut it in the middle, we'll squash it in, and tie it with that. Here's my clip. It's the same thing then you pull down the bits that hang. Look out your bow. So you have a nice bow to put on a bouquet or handle of a basket or wherever you want to use it. Okay. Now, um, ribbons that you want to put into a wreath or insert into arrangements, so you're not going to be tying them on. So that's where you would use your wire. So I'll use a bit of the smaller ribbon. So again, it's the same principle. You're going to make your loops. You might have a, a longer hangy bit. So you're doing your figure of eights. You're catching them in the middle. So your hanging bit, okay, one loop, bottom loop, top loop, bottom loop. I'm just going to do three loops. Okay, and then you leave a bit hanging, take that off. So I'll just put it back up here. Right, so you have your three loops either side. You're holding it in the middle. You can see that. So you're going to squash that in. And this time you're going to use a wire. So I'm going to use the, the green stub wire. So you're putting that through the middle. And then you're twisting the wire. So that was probably a bit hard to see, but I'll just show you what I did. So we got the wire, made a loop, a loop like that, put the ribbon in, and then twisted it down the stem. So there you can see the ribbon. Now you can balance it up a bit because and slightly longer on one side, so just pull them out, stretch them out, puff them out. So then you have a bow that you can, a bow with a leg on it, and you can pop it in then. You often see them inside of a, a basket arrangement or in, in a wreath, where you put it right into the wreath. So, and you can do that with nearly all ribbons. Okay, so that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed that and um, let me know if it's too fast or you couldn't see what I was doing. Um, I'm new at this, at making videos, not at the floristry. So thank you for your time and you can practice. Bye bye.